Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Um, so when we talk about consciousness, we should probably, first of all, try to agree on what it is that you're pointing at. And uh, when we introspectively refer to consciousness, what I think we mean by it is, first of all, second-order conception. It's not just that there is contents available, but we know the second content are available. We basically model what it would be like when something was to see this content. And uh, it's also, we know, um, when consciousness is happening, it's always happening now. So it's the sense of this is happening now. This is presence. It's present. There's something happening to me. And the third aspect is one that is somewhat calculative. It's um, the sense of being something and looking into the world from this perspective. It's basically inhabiting the surface of a sample. But you don't have to do that. Be conscious, you can also be conscious in dreams, for instance, at night, and there's sometimes nobody there to witness this stuff happening. So you might have only this awareness of events. So this is not really a definition, it's more like pointing at a certain phenomenon, which we call the phenomenology of consciousness. And uh, when you want to explain it, I think you have to capture this phenomenology. As the other side is the functionality of consciousness. This is basically the uh, wires and pulleys behind it, the uh, mechanisms that make it happen. And I suspect that consciousness is a mechanism to create coherence in the mind. And it's basically uh, the machine learning algorithm for self organizing <laughs> What we observe in human beings is that they all are conscious. Really interesting, right? It's not something that you get. So uh, we, at the end of our PhD, is the pinnacle of extremely complicated mental development. We get there before we can track a finger. And this suggests that, um, also observe the fact that human beings, when they don't manage to become conscious, and they don't manage to wake up as infants, they remain persistently in a vegetative state. They don't get anywhere. And so, so consciousness seems to come first, not last. It seems to be not the result of extremely complicated mental organization, but it's prerequisite. And when we observe in uh, biology that basically every complicated animal that we can make sense of is conscious, there's nothing simpler, there's no alternative. If there was something simpler, more alternative, evolution would, in a number of cases, converge on that simpler solution, and you should observe people which can do the same things as us without being conscious. And so I suspect it's actually the simplest way to train the human brain into the state that it is in. And um, when we look at it from another functional perspective, it is a projection of our working memory states at any one time into something that can be used as a protocol. So you can later call it out as a stream of consciousness. And it's something that you find very reflected, I think, in a slightly confusing way in the global workspace theory by Bernard Bars. It is this idea of a spotlight that is somehow going over the integrated working memory contents. And um, I think of AI as a philosophical project. 99% of AI is just making data processing more efficient, but 1% of it is this philosophical project. And a lot of confusion comes because people think it's the same, one or the other, but there's slightly different aspects of this field. And I think it's currently the best way to make progress on this question of what minds are, how they realize the nature. And AI is basically bringing perspectives from control theory together and uh, with the theory of representation. And it's a tradition of thought that AI is building on, and this tradition begins in many ways with Aristotle, and then modern times with Leibniz, and uh, Fega, who thought about the nature of languages, and Helmholtz, who thought about um, the physics of psychology, Harsky, um, who thinks about how to formalize uh, Frege's ideas of how to make a language to thought more systematically, Wittgenstein, who had this idea to turn English into some kind of programming language so you can say true things in it. And then basically he preempted Minsky's project by 30 years and also failed 30 years before Minsky as the end of his life for maybe some other reasons. And uh, then you basically see this line continuing into the present. And when you look at Aristotle, he is in many ways a very modern thinker. And uh, Christians turned him into some kind of dogmatic figure. Uh, but when you read him, you find that he is very approachable. He's really a guy walking through those thoughts and collecting all the ideas he's. He's very much like a young uh, modern explorer, and he is willing to argue this year. He's willing to take steps back. He can give counter arguments to the manual attempts. Very refreshing to read. Also, he was super successful. Maybe some of you know that he was the teacher of Alexander the Great, who went on to become an extremely uh, successful civilization builder and author and politician. And so, there's really a um, polymath. And he, when he describes, um, Things in nature, he said that the soul is extremely important. It's the animated principle basically on, um, on nature. He calls it basically dynamic form, but it's printed on the physical universe and shapes it in a form. 
And soul is something that you find everywhere in nature. Wherever you find complex structure in nature, uh, like in ecosystems or plants and so on, you have something like the soul. But uh, the reason news is something the intellect that only humans have because it does require symbolic reflection, grammatical language, and so on. And when you look, uh, look at this text, he really comes up with a number of categories in respect to perceptions and three images that send the data in recognition process these geometric shapes, graphs. Um, generated AI in a way, sensory reproduction, multi-modal scene interpretation is, is events terms for all of these things. And it's very modern. And a lot of the philosophers who read this later tried to map this into their own much less technical way of looking at things that often mistranslate the terms or merge them in weird ways, but the terms don't actually do the work that I was totally envisioned for them. But when you read this as a modern cognitive scientist or AI researcher, this is one of us. This guy would have killed for having a computer in mind. <laughs> And what it's very interesting that uh, much of this is not mysterious to him. He calls it actuality usually, and he doesn't seem to have a hard problem. And I suspect that this hard problem of consciousness that um, David Sharp was famously branded um, as um, the, the thing that made him famous is something that happens after the Enlightenment, bit, bit after the Renaissance, but outside of this culture, it doesn't seem to be a big issue. And the Western philosophers basically despair about consciousness, and they came to a number of divergent positions, like, well, there's in the NDA that mind and matter are completely separate things, and this uh, uh, interaction between is very broad, because which is the definition calls it closed. Then idealism, which means everything is mind. Panpsychism is that mind is an aspect of matter that is distributed everywhere where matter is. Uh, materialism uh, says that everything is just matter and mechanisms. And identity theory is that mental processes are exactly the same thing as brain processes. Then there is uh, the integrated information theory, um, which is in some sense the control group. If somebody doesn't see that it's a violation of the short Turing thesis, then they should not be in the room. Illusionism is the idea that there is no consciousness at all. You only need to explain why some people claim to have it. Uh, Mysterianism is the theory that something that consciousness cannot be understood. If uh, Noam Chomsky cannot understand it, Noam Chomsky is a mysterianist. <laughs> and uh, so all these theories basically they give arguments either for why consciousness cannot be understood by us, or why it's in principle impossible to understand consciousness because the terminology and the concepts are built in such a way that there is no solution. On the other hand, there are um, complementary and convergent positions in philosophy and uh, in cognitive science. Um, one is functionalism, the idea that, like everything else that we construct as a meaningful object, consciousness is some kind of behavior in which reality changes under particular circumstances, some invariance that we can discover there. Representationalism is the idea that consciousness is some kind of representation, some kind of causal pattern that itself is not identical to a physical <laughs> process, but is something that can involve physical processes. The attention schema theory by Graziano um, is that it's similar to our, uh, our body schema being a model of our body and space. Consciousness is a model of our attention in the body. And global workspace theory is this idea that consciousness is the localized projection of your working memory contents. And, and you have Strasbourg's adaptive resonance theory, which says it's some kind of oscillation effect with the neurons. And uh, virtualism, uh, I would call this the position that consciousness is a simulation of what it like of something what's conscious, right? If you look into the brain, what you find is just telling itself passing messages. And uh, you only see mechanisms at this level. But this message passing, you can implement arbitrary uh, representations. These representations can be control models, which makes them call the structure acting in the real world. And so consciousness can exist as if. What would it be like if all these trillions of cells would form a piece of agent that is confronted with a piece of reality that simulate the reality that simulate the model of that agent in the first person, put it in a simulation of the reality, uh, expose it to the simulated interest in the world, and then use the output of this model to drive all the cells as if they were one thing. And it's also something that's completely compatible with our Buddhist scene. 